from my position, it was such a one. You guys were a wonderful audience. I like had quadraphonic laughter. I could hear four different people laughing near me, and I was like, "All right, right, live audience. We're here together. Don't take it for granted." So I was, you know, I was realizing, like, home alone. I know we all talk about. We've talked about it now for two years, but I'm saying it's still real. That I could report to you. I'd come out of the hallway and say. I love the laughter. Also, at a, at a personal level, having been a film student in New York, it's just like incredibly surreal to like sit here and hear the famous Angelica on subway and like <laughs> <laughs> a hero of mine and like wonder what other film students are here who are like going to dismiss this and just like I would have. <laughs> and um, it's such a, I'm just so, so honored to like, be even in a book like this. But, yeah, Angelica's still standing, we're here, it's, this, is, this is all important notes, but I was um, particularly struck tonight um, by the relaxation that I felt in seeing, and I, I was trying to trace it to what it was, right? The, the comfort I felt in seeing a non-threatening U.S. countryside that nobody experienced a threat to their well-being, that a person could camp autonomously and, and fare well, that uh, nobody's password failed, there was no digital content, it was a digital safe zone, I felt safe, that I didn't have, that the characters didn't have to contend with um, some of these things that are like kind of abrading us and, and kind of pricked us pretty hard over the last couple of years. So there was just something so fresh and then I, that I've also thought about renegade, I thought about radical departures, decisions that you took, um, and all of these things I've really valued about your film. Not to mention some really major things like re envisioning a Western landscape and, and what would happen in that landscape. And so I'm riffing on things that I know that matter to you a whole lot and but I feel like they come across so vividly and I I, I think um, it's just a pleasure to note those things. And not to mention bringing in the freshness of seeing two people we don't get to see do something they don't get to do often or ever and take up the, the center stage and you know, just be able to revel as um, American moviegoers and seeing some long-term hardworking actors just get to do something so very different. Um, yeah, I, that's much more beautifully put than I will, I suppose, now attempt to have to respond to. Um, no, I read your and, notes. They are very beautiful. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Like, there are a lot of things that sort of bubble their way into, into this story, but um, one of them, and uh, the one that, that speaks to, to cinema and to the form and the past of it, which, which to be honest, was like not the primary thing. Like I, I did set out to make a movie about people and for people, not about cinema or for it, but like of course that's the form and, and, it, and it's going to speak to what's come before it, whether we want it to or not, and particularly dealing with landscapes that have this I iconic past. Um, uh, and, and one is so particular so particularly tough and violent, um, it, it seemed important to, to try to shine a different, different light on this sort of place. Um, and to do so, not, uh, hopefully not be seen as, as dismissing that side of things, which, which is real in, in many ways, maybe, maybe not as real as, as the movies might suggest, but Said to show another side of it is also true. Another side of it that I want to be true or hope to be true, and I believe that's like blurring the lines of like the real or the aspirational somehow. But um, I, mean, I don't know. Like this is my home and it's where I grew up, and I just wanted to, to do something that would honor the sort of people who I've loved there and, and who have loved me. Um, and I was told at some point you, you, you make something for your friends and your family likes it. Uh, that's a bonus, and it, it does seem like the only honest way to go about it. So that's what we try to do, um, and to do it with, with friends as well. And I'm honored to have many of them here. Um, 
I mean, not that many. It was on the big crew, but <laughs> <laughs> many of those who, who are out there, I'm honored to be at the end of this. So not to mention these actors who um, were so key to the conception of the idea and even the, the confidence to, yeah, there it is. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the confidence to, to, to like allow the world of silence that seems true to it, to allow the space that seems true to it, and only to do so um, with knowledge that there were these, these masters ready to, to fill all of that with the past and the present. Um, and what a, what a treat to work with um, heroes of mine, as I was able to. I do feel so, so lucky about all of it. Well, I was, you know, when we, 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 we have had a chance to speak, which has been a big pleasure. And, you know, I reveled in minimalism, and you know, I came to you, but right, that first comment was audacity of single location, you know. Um, and tonight, I felt that again, and I wanted to comment just about what it's like to be like a campsite seven. But just the rawness of going through it like in real time of the events in that campsite and just kind of blows my mind that in 2022 I'm seeing a film that can take it to this like, kind of arduous, um, focused, delimited space and make me feel so much and have so much happen. And was, so much happen in what I had participating in those two people. And the idea that it was well, yeah, so, so, so. Um, so I just, you know, I, I don't know if you, I don't know if that's just a question other than it's, it is a supreme compliment, but I am curious how you took that risk, because that's, that's a big deal to be that, to, to hold true, and to present to your friends, even this micro-crew, this unbelievable crew that could get out there with you without bells and whistles. Like, did anyone watch you and say, how are you going to pull that off a single location? I, I would be very proud to stand here and say I, I turned down $10 million um, because it was untrue to the ethic. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't so. Um, but but we, we what we were able to do and what I'm very proud of is like we did it at the scale that it was true to the thing. and. And people were supportive of that, maybe because we come up doing short films at a very similar scale, in a very similar place, in a fairly similar style, and have kind of learned over the years how to shoot movies in the middle of nowhere in Colorado, and what size of van you need to rent to fit a camera in from LA, and how long the film takes to get back, and. I know the band always wants to be too small. And, um, and, and it was just a continuation of that, but there's like that, that bittersweet credit that does go to the pandemic we were put into because I probably would have assumed that to do a feature film and a bigger story would have required somehow graduating from some of those things or like moving beyond them. And, and I'm very grateful um, through like the morning that we had to deal with that um, I've been shown that it, it doesn't actually have to be so and um, um, that's like one of the great lessons of my life I suppose and it's been a recurring theme um, that long that coming to New York only to realize that, that was the place I always wanted to be and that was home and what home statements feels like and um, um, anyway we just yeah, I don't know, I'm trying to be true to the thing, trying to be true to the place, to the characters. There's there's level of bells and whistles that are exciting, but another level of that that we're kind of disrespectful to. So, we're talking about that. I see GIGs popping out of no bottles. <laughs> um, but uh, I also wanted to, we'd love to open up if there are questions or comments that people want to Converse for Max, please. Hi, Max. I'm JR. 
Hi. I'm the actress and I'm your biggest fan. My question is, how do I audition for you in the future? Um, I really love your work. I, I stumbled on you in the, the student film, I may pronounce it wrong, The Chew Boys of Summer. Mm -hmm. And that, that led me to Lefty Righty, which I've watched at least 10 times. And just, to, I have two questions. Do you, did you shoot Lefty Righty and this in chronological order? Is that, is that something that you do, shoot in chronological order? And um, what was the main challenge of going from like the short film Lefty Righty to a feature? Well, to start off, Dale Dickey dug herself irretrievably into my mind um, <laughs> via Deborah here and her movie Winter's Ball, and so that's probably the Um, and that, that's really like the truth. I never, never stop thinking about that movie after seeing it and, and that after very specifically. Um, um, that that short your friend too was was shot. I don't know four four years ago or something like that. Um, so so quite a while ago. And 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 the process of moving through shorts into features has been one of. Um, I suppose trying to appreciate the things that went right and, and deal look look affectionately but honestly at, at the things that didn't. Um, and, and I've been blessed to work with largely all the same people um, from those on to this. And uh, you know the funny thing about directing is like the only job you do for a few days every three years and pretend to be a professional. Um, but everyone I work with has you know so much experience now and like I. Don't, I can't as a white you know, I'm now working off their charity, and um, um, I've tried to take credit for as much of all the things they've brought in the as possible. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's really the, the, the simplest answer, is, is just um, looking for what works and, and what can be done better, and, and try not to be embarrassed if the things that work are small. What? I see a diversity, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you for this movie. I uh, grew up in the Sierra Nevada foothills, which is not the Rockies, but um, so it felt like uh, a sense of home and a very really strong sense of place. Question is, so thank you. My question is, um, can I go around how you found the balance between not making it like a really difficult movie, um, particularly around climate change, like there are aspects of drought and water levels and you know, oil extraction, but it seems as if there's just such a strong focus on the beauty of the natural world, um, and yet the political is always there. So I'm, Thank you. That's a really, really nice question. I, I hope, I hope we found a balance. You know, I guess I can't be the judge of that. Um, but I hope it went for all of you. And I don't know. It's, it's just this fucking confusing thing we're all faced with. Where like, what do you do in a crumbling world that it's still, where you still laugh every day or still love someone? Like, I don't really know. Is the truth like I, I live in a place that's in thirty years of drought and at any moment going to burn up and that I still take photos of the sunsets and they still move me um, and where the reservoirs are like many of them are actually gone and yet that's only revealed the river that ran beneath them for so very long um, and it's this isn't to dismiss these things which are like so vast and, and real but just to like I, I don't know, like, it, it fascinates me that there's, there's like, beauty amongst all the, like, pain for that. that my, my grandma's house in California burned down, that's still a beautiful ridge. It's very confusing. 
and there's like elements of that for the characters too. I think that's sort of a central question in the movie of, of like, what does it mean to love something that hurts us? Or like, what does it mean to love a memory or a hope? Um, or can we find joy in, in those things? Like, can, can joy and sorrow coexist? And I, I hope the answer is yes. Like, I hope that's the answer the, the movie presents simply because it's what I want to believe, like, so I have to believe, I, I don't really want to live a life in which that isn't, isn't the case. Um, and, and that's, that's true of, of people and who we have and who we've lost, and it's true of nature too, what we have and what we lose in it. Um, um, yeah, it's a really good question. I don't, I don't really know, but like, this is sort of, I guess, trying, trying to answer it in some way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, for me, when I first saw this trailer, it absolutely brought me home. So, really, my first question is, where did you grow up? Because I grew up maybe an hour from here in a town, Westcliff. It's West. got 400 people. It's an old silver mining town. It is... In Colorado? Yeah, it's so Colorado. Wow. This is like right outside of Norwood. Wait, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like Miramont Reservoir. Okay, so if you go, it's near the same way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, for me, it was insane seeing this just a trailer because honestly, coming into this, I was half terror, half hope that someone would maybe get this exact place in this small part of the state, right? And you did. And so I really am so grateful to you. But my question is second. What were you most afraid of in doing this that you wanted to get right about this place and these people? Because it seems like you do feel that tension between growing up in a place like this and then coming to film school in New York and that kind of push and pull you keep speaking about in terms of the climate and in terms of politics and you can feel that beautiful tension in this. So really what was the one thing? Well, really good question. Well, I, I, I mean, with in terms of the place itself, like we just, I think we worked with a few simple sort of concepts, um, some of which were budgetarily obligated as well. But like, if we couldn't find it there, it didn't belong there. And that's why I think that's my truck. And like, that's the trailer I bought. Once those twelve hundred dollars were spent, there was like no turning back. <laughs> 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 And like my biggest fear, if I'm really honest with myself, and like I don't know if this is the case or going to be the case or not, it's like I, I do fear that to try to show these things gently, whether it's a challenged place or a challenged world, like might be perceived by some people as like dismissing problems. I don't think it is it's certainly not what we set out to do. It's um, and to be a hopeful version of it, but like that's, I guess, honestly, like the thing that keeps me up at night. But what I want to believe is, like, to portray this version of the world is like a step towards getting there. Hopefully, I don't, I don't know any other way around it about it, other than coding is that you can do. But there's more done clearly. So, um, yeah, that's that. that that's good. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm from Chicago, so I don't recognize this world at all. <laughs> 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 so it was magnificent. It was so beautiful. It's willing to see that it exists. So my, my question to you is about the casting and what were your intentions beyond the magnificent that they do? And um, and I'm also curious about the sort of uh, inter-ethnic uh, component. Yeah, um, very good question. Um, I, I, I just, I don't know, my, my life out there has been made richer and more lovely by such a, a mix of people who 
wash up in unexpected places and may be very different in very many ways, but to have found themselves uh, in um, such an uninevitable spot tend to wind up sharing something. Um, and I, I really love that idea of people who don't know each other yet, but know that they probably have something in common by being in this space together. Um, at, at another level, um, you know, like coming from what's seen as a, as a white world, and is in certain ways, it also seemed unforgivable to allow that perception to discount the many, many people living out there who aren't so. Um, that's, that's, that's a huge piece of it. You know, West, West comes up from Santa Fe. I think nobody's got a claim to this thing other than him, really, at the end of the day. Um, the cowhands are all my friends I grew up with. Um, visitors came into set from other places as, as they do in this world. Um, and uh, you know, those are like deep questions about who belongs to a place and who's visiting it. Um, and like really, really real questions. I, I feel like that's home, but of course I'm a visitor in my own way as well. Um, so ho hopefully there's, yeah, all these characters coming together, finding things. It's, it's, Acknowledging those things and also acknowledging that like, there's meals to be shared and um, love to be chased, and uh, like, that's, that's an important thing as well. Super strong invitation to go camping. I'm going to figure out who's at the campsites. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Like, when, you're, when you're in a place with no one else around, like, you do get to know those around you. And I know there are people who have that experience in cities in New York. It wasn't really so for me. Like, I, Few years here, four years, surrounded by all the people in the world, and I made lovely friends. But it was also like the loneliest I've ever been. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different ways we kind of move through space and proximity and and like experience our own adjustable scales. I think that um, I think it's a good summer form. I don't know. I mean, it's really about like you can start a conversation and have a good encounter. Yeah. And hopefully Almost any state, and it's important for people on the coast to know that. Well, I, yeah, I mean, when people have asked me what, what I want people to walk away with from this film, the truth is, I, all, all I would really want and what would be the greatest honor is if people um, find life just like a little bit more textured for an hour or a day or a week, and a little more colorful, and, and maybe some small thing. like. A little more beautiful, and those small things, of course, are, are everywhere. This is where you turn the camera on and invited the actors out to. But like this the version of the story, I do believe it would take place, place anywhere. It would not be the same, but um, like an emotion of it could be. And and not to mention, maybe this is like including thought that I'm having, which is not to mention the practice of your filmmaking, which is providing the uh, belief credence in a small practice can yield something. It's a tradition that was there that has been there over certain decades. It's peaked and then it proceeds. It's so great that you and your posse here you know, could toil at that level and create something in you know, this frugal and um, direct way. And I think there's quite many filmmakers in this audience tonight. And are going to school and you know, just are really bolstered and happy to get reminded of this. I would so. Or, or, or if the films just walk away and think they could have done way better. That, 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 that's about the inspiration. It's hard, it's hard, right? It's true, it's true. Since you mentioned, I do want to like, embarrass my friends who are here. Um, Alfonso de los Alceros. Um, one pragmatic level, which is telling your neighbors to tell your friends, 
in the small films. It's all happening even better than your advice. Your oral cabinet, <laughs> you know. Um, plus your advice to amplify that. But um, the fact is, you know, if you enjoyed yourself, relaxed, felt something, spread the word.